Dear Mona, trust that voice within that tells you that you are valid, magic, sensational. It will soon manifest and show you what it means. Love, self. I'm Melissa Mashile and welcome to my own kind of beautiful. Yes, on days I cry, but when the day tells me to rejoice, give thanks and spread love and light, I rediscover the many beautiful ways to do so. I'm testament that what seems to break you is actually an opportunity for you to grow to your fullest potential. These are the words that were said by an amazing woman and she's here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mona Munyani. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now you are an actor, right? Yeah. And you know, I know you for your confidence because I follow you in social media and you are just somebody to be reckoned with. You inspire me so much. Can you tell the people at home what you are known for? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm best known for my acting work. Yeah. Uh, I think the most popular role was Dr. Ntabele Mamoramo. Yes. Um, but yes, I had a stint on Instagram before my account got hacked. And I had to start all over again. Wow. Uh, where I really was known for inspiring women like myself to own their power and yeah. their confidence and to live a more purposeful life. You know, mm. because I do define myself as yeah. a spiritual being, mm. having a human experience. Yes, yeah. I love that. And pow, it's like pow. Yes. <laughs> you know, it started with power. Now it's actually my company, Power yeah. of Wellness. Wow. Um, or Power Pty Ltd. And it's mm. it's my, you know, I want to say it's a production company, but it's more yeah. than that for me. It's a mm. legacy you know, that I've started building after the loss of my child yeah. to really inspire exactly that owning of power in all yeah. of its expressions. Yeah. And how did you get your power back? Because I know losing a child cannot yeah. be easy. It just like strips you from so much. And you're like, Mona, how, how, how did you come back from that? One breath at a time, mm. you know, one yeah. literal breath at a time. Um, I. When I lost my daughter, I realized every bit of pain and trauma that I've carried my whole life yeah. was incomparable. So either I was going to break and never ever be able to put myself together again, yeah. or I was going to purposefully prioritize my wellness. Mm. So I went on a deliberate journey of healing where I did everything. It doesn't matter mm. what somebody suggested, I yeah. went, I did it to try and rebuild myself again because mm. that experience it disintegrated me there's no other way of putting it yeah. I, was, I was just completely destroyed but i said to myself one piece at a time we're yeah. going to rebuild ourselves and that's that's what i did it's been a journey it still is a journey yeah um but from where i began and where i am now mm. look at you now power. and i mean you're a mom you're a mom you know you still have a daughter how how are you approaching that and raising her? You know, and that was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, in the very beginning, it was difficult for me to go back to being a mother. Sure. Because I felt like such a failure in that department. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a self-blame, you know? Because sure. if something happened suddenly without any explanation. Not ready for that, you yeah. I didn't know who to blame, so I blamed myself. And mm -hmm. it was through then the prioritizing of my wellness that I started reconnecting with being a new mother to her. I realized I couldn't go back to being the mother I was before That's I was deep. pregnant or before I had the baby or before she passed. So I had to redefine who I was going to be moving forward. And it's it's such a beautiful process now because she's four, so Aww. she talks and she has her own personality. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm being reintroduced to my motherhood role that way. Mm. So it's just a process where you have to release and let go and flow with it and mm. allow what works to stick and what doesn't work to go on down that riverbank. Mona, yeah. it's the way you put your words, man. It's so deep. It's the reality. Ah. It's the reality. I get my power from source and where I, mm. I connect with sources in nature. Um, mm. And that's what the journey of healing mostly was about. I've traveled the whole of South Africa. I, I had to get away from the congestion of the city, mm. um, from other people and their expectations, and from there just look at the proof that there was something mm. greater mm. than my pain. There was something that was in charge 
um, on a level that I didn't have to worry about. And from that source, I could draw my mm. strength. And that's just, I guess, how I think now yeah. and how I process information is that there's more to it than just me. Mm. There's definitely more to it. And you have that. You spoke about releasing, right, and expressing. Um, are you planning to write a book, write something? Um, I actually realized that that is what was happening. Mm. I've, I've always been a fan of literature. I grew up reading. I was a bookworm by the age of 10. I mean, I, wow. I loved it. My mother, she she's the one who planted that seed in me. That's why wow. I even have the Powerful Club. Mm. Um, but I realized that the way I express myself is healing mm. to others. Mm. Um, and I've decided, yes, I'm going to write my book. It's called... Yeah my journey of healing um, and I want, I'm handwriting it so that's going to be interesting wow. yes it's, yeesh. <laughs> my handwriting is terrible <laughs> but I'm going to transcribe it and maybe mm. even get an audio book you know oh, can't wait. so um, I'm definitely going to do that yeah whichever way I can help people on their journey of healing mm. I, I definitely want to play a part mm. um, where do you get the strength from in, in how others receive me, mm. you know, I've always had that thing where I take pleasure from seeing other people mm. get light from me, like to wow. be happy because of me. If I can make someone laugh or feel mm. better, that that reinforces me. Mm. So, um, and I, I, I think I'm funny. You are. I really think I'm <laughs> hilarious. Like I could, I could have done stand up if it didn't mean that I could do the same set over and over and over. Yeah. But I also think my humor is just... It's, it's its own thing. So mm. I appreciate other people liking yeah. that I'm funny. So I don't mind sharing. Do you think it's a <laughs> calling? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think my creativity is my gift. Mm. Because, you know, normally I'm an introvert. I like my own space. No way. No, I, 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 I have to prepare for people. What has been your favorite role thus far and why? It has to be comrade -y. Wow. the story of Solomon Matham. Oh, you killed that role, by the way. Thank you so much. But um, why it was important is because I've lost my grandfather the same way. Mm. Um, I have a grandfather who was hung, um, you know, by that same law during the bad day times. Yeah. And I auditioned for that role for two years. I had to learn what Girl, I transcribed that script. I was there with, like, Google Translate. I was... Uh, and I got the role, but it was just so important for me to be a part of telling my history, mm. my people. Um, and it, it was just also given that my mother was an activist. Mm. And I was born in exile. I was born in Zimbabwe. Um, Yo. So my mother oh. was an activist. My father was an activist. And it just felt like I got to honor them yes. in the best way. You know, and it's it's there on Netflix now. So yes, forever, girl, ever, darling. forever. The story is there. So yeah, <laughs> it was really, really one yeah. of my favorite roles, and to also represent the fact mm. that women played a part in liberating our country. We weren't mm. only on on the forefront. We were also at home taking care of the children, holding the family together. Absolutely. Um, we are such a powerful example of it, resilience. Mm. And, and transformation and revolution. And yeah. I, I definitely, that was my favorite role. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you find your own kind of beautiful through everything? You know, losing your child and going from one role to another and the ups and downs of the industry. And you're like, Mona, this is my own kind of beautiful. Through exploration, mm. you know, not limiting yourself. We have so many trends as well. Yeah. Um, so many different ways to express our beauty as human beings. And yeah. I just did not allow myself to look at something and be like, ah, oh, that's for someone with darker skin or someone yeah. with lighter skin or somebody who's curvy or skinny or whatever. Yeah. Whatever I feel like, I do it. Versatility is the key for me when it comes to the expression of beauty. But it's also through accepting myself. Mm. You know, which is a yeah. constant process. I mean, you're a mom. Yeah, yeah. You know, our bodies change, and then hey. you that you're like, ah, you ruined <laughs> me. But you, you receive and you accept what those changes represent, mm. and the process that you've undergone to get to this space. And then it's when you feel good about whatever state you find yourself in mm. that you can best express that beauty. You know, no mm. matter what it looks like. So, whether I look like this 
or I throw the wig off. <laughs> it's beautiful because yes. I always feel it within myself. Mm. Feel it. There's power in actually feeling beautiful because then you are truly beautiful. Please look into that camera and speak to women who are struggling to feel beautiful, to women who are struggling to find their own kind of beautiful. So to women who are struggling to find their own kind of beautiful, to feel beautiful, I want to remind you of one thing. You are the only you that exists. Now think about that. No one else is you. And you can never be anyone else. So don't you dare play small. Don't you dare speak ill to yourself. Rise, queen. Shine. Own your power and your crown because no one else is going to do it for you. Get with it. And pow. Pow! Muna. <laughs> I, I literally want to cry. I literally want to cry. Don't cry. That makeup is gorgeous. <sighs> I have something for you. Aww. So I've got this cushion for you. Now you're going to make me <laughs> <laughs> I've got this cushion for you. So it's got a really inspiring lady that I think you can get get some positive energy from. You know, keep vibe your house. So, you know, you, you're in the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> She's incredible, she's amazing, she inspires so many. She's strong, she's beautiful, and she has found her own kind of beautiful. And I hope this can make you smile. So let's look at her, darling. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you. We love her. We love her. <laughs> Mona, thank you so much for being on the thank show. You thank you for your time, thank you for your wisdom. You are so wise and Wow, your gift inspires so many. Continue spreading positivity and inspiring that young girl and that woman to be better. Just me sitting here in this interview, I, wow, I'm a different person. You have just inspired, I'm like emotional. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I'm Melissa Mashile. This has been Finding Your Own Kind of Beautiful. Goodbye.